the next 12 years, Bobby bounced around Europe and Asia. Stuck overseas, he missed the 1997 funeral of his mother, Regina. In the early 1990s, according to um, one guest grandmaster who knows them both, uh, they were talking almost every day. Ultimately, he was very close to his mother, and it must have been a great tragedy for him that he couldn't spend those last years with her, that he, he was a fugitive. He first now comes back into the public imagination with these wild anti-American, anti-Semitic rants that he gives on Philippine radio. Well, this is all wonderful news. It's time for the f***ing U.S. to get their heads kicked in. To get, it's time to finish off the U.S. once and for all. They say, death to President Bush, I say, death to the United States. F***ing United States, f*** the Jews. The Jews are a criminal people. They mutilate their children. They're a murderous, criminal, thieving, lying bastards. They made up the Holocaust as our word of truth to it. He was increasingly obsessed with these anti-Semitic issues. He wasn't playing chess anymore. So this was taking up more and more space. He said things like all the Jews in America should be rounded up. I mean, it's horrendous. Close down all the synagogues, arrest all the Jews, execute hundreds of thousands of Jewish ringleaders. Despite having a Jewish mother, Bobby has never considered himself Jewish. His anti-Semitism was a mindset. It was a sort of psychopathic illness, which he couldn't shake off. Probably some hidden or not so hidden antagonism toward his mom, uh, perhaps to his absent father. In 2002, a stunning secret about Bobby's paternity was discovered. There wasn't a whole lot known about Gerhard Fischer, and when we started digging into it, we discovered that, in fact, Gerhard Fischer had never actually really been part of Bobby's life, that he never actually ever entered the United States. All evidence points to the father being Paul Nemenyi, who was a Hungarian physicist who um, died in the uh, early 1950s. It wasn't clear whether they ever actually told Bobby that Paul was his real father. Beyond the physical resemblance, Bobby and Paul Nemenyi seem to share certain personality traits. Nemanyi was a very interesting character. According to one former co-worker who we interviewed, he had a habit of carrying soap around in his pockets at all times so that he could wash his hands after he touched door handles. He was an animal rights activist. He did not believe in wearing wool. He would occasionally walk around with his pajamas sticking out from underneath his clothing. Bobby appears to have inherited more than just his father's eccentricities. The many had this, as I read, he had this phenomenal spatial ability. He, he apparently thought and looked at issues in ways that no one else did. It was unique. The chess you have to visualize um, how a board with 64 black and white squares that's filled with um, you know, maybe two dozen pieces, uh, how it might look 10 moves down, down the line. That's all about spatial relations. It really seems like there are a lot of parallels in the way that they thought. There remains one final twist to the revelation of Bobby's biological father. Paul Nemenyi was Jewish. And so Bobby Fischer, arguably the world's most vocal anti-Semite, is the product of not one, but two Jewish parents. Paul Nemenyi's life and career were ruined by the Nazis. He was fired from his university teaching job in Germany because he was Jewish. and. To have a son then who has somehow grasped on to anti-Semitism as a cause is incredibly ironic. The absolute criminals, the Jews, the Jews are behind this, it's a filthy Jew country. The explanation then of Bobby's resentment remains open for debate. I think my father, at the end of the day, he viewed Bobby as a guy who had unfortunately lost his mind. A lot of people think he's mentally ill. I don't think he's mentally ill. He's just become mean. He's become rotten <laughs> inside.